welcome we are going to discuss one of the most important topics related to both international finance and international economics this is regarded as one of the finest principles based on which a country's balance of payment exchange rate regime and foreign exchange reserve is dependent a country always think of itself becoming trade surplus to become trade surplus it should immensely increase its total amount of exports and should be able to control its total amount of imports but it is easier said than done sometimes it looks like it's going to be possible over the next 10 20 years then suddenly you will find that one of the variables based on which it was intended that the total amount of export is going to increase at 20 30 40 40% which was estimated rather is actually going to undergo lots of change because of such changes happening very rapidly other factors other variables included in that study are going to undergo lots of change also what i mean is suppose say a country like india it wants to be trade surplus by the year 20, uh, 2025 right now it is deficient by 30% to 40% it wants to increase its base of software exports that is the in- invisible items it wants to increase exports in the field of textile food grade products packaged foods handicraft goods small scale industries products and lots of material related to gems and jewelry but because of the increase in population it said in economics that to sustain an increase of 1% of population the gdp must grow at 4 to 5% so with india population increasing by almost 1% every year you will find it difficult that in 5 years time 10 years time your population has gone up by 5 to 8% thereby increasing the amount of exports that is required and the amount of imports that is required rather and the there were considerably decreasing the amount of exports that can be made because of increase in the populative activity the demand of each consumable item is going to change because of these early changes that can happen the surplus which seems to be there actually translates into a very small amount than what actual data shows so over a very long period of time what we think of the trade surplus actually doesn't translate into actual surplus so in that regard we need lots of foreign exchange and we need to control the foreign exchange reserves to a larger extent so that it can be used for purchasing for importing the material which cannot be replaced within the domestic economy and one of the material is oil and oil reserves india's total import in 2005 stood at 140 billion dollars out of that oil imports stood at 43 billion dollars which was roughly 30% of all the imports in 2009 this increased to 360 billion dollars out of which oil in- imports was alone 90 billion dollars 25% of total imports if we substitute these oil exports oil imports then we are nearing a trade surplus mark we are not far behind that of imports 
our exports are growing by 87% in 5 years on an average so 18 almost 17 80 per, 18% to 25% each year but imports are growing much less but the problem is our oil bill oil import bill is going up very quickly over the last few years so we need to study exchange control in a very efficient and affable manner exchange control means controlling the transactions overall transactions of foreign exchange in india it's a system of conserving national wealth or increasing it our stability in economic market and the respect which the currency of a country will command depends upon the soundness of exchange control this also acts as a commercial policy instrument and affects free trade and acts as a trade barrier so we need to control the amount of spending amount of import that is made in the form of foreign exchanges we are also required to keep it stable the exchange rate must be stable over a last period of time so exchange control is all about controlling the rate of exchange of rupees with dollar with rupees with pound so basically uh, dollar being the primarily uh, very dominative currency in world of trade we need to keep our exchange rate of rupees with dollar at a very efficient manner previously if you go back 20 30 years the pattern of world trade and global economics has undergone tremendous changes like national frontiers before 1945 before the end of second world war there are lots of countries having lots of power lots of economic might which happened to be japan germany austria hungary lots of small countries but they have become weaker because they could not sustain the amount of gdp growth after the war these economies got ravaged most of these economies bearing japan america russia they got ravaged by the second world war but india was involved in second world war as a proxy india was not an independent country by the time of second world war so it was not directly involved but still it was involved under british control in india the exchange control is introduced on the outbreak of second world war on september 3 1939 the exchange control originated in india and it was relating to transactions between india and with those countries having non sterling pound transactions the huge sterling balance accumulated on india's account in london during the war years was frozen by uk government when the war ended in 1945 after independence india needed foreign exchange mostly to meet the requirement of its developing economy it wanted to invest large amount of money in infrastructure but the freezing by uk affected it the country's sources of foreign exchange earnings were limited to the exports of a few traditional commodities like tea jute etc so the freezing of sterling balance of india in uk and the needed imports of plant and machinery raw material foods of etc because the import was very necessary at that point of time because the presence of machinery equipment for manufacturing sector was almost negligible in india it leads to uh, a very significant and large amount of deficit in, in india's balance of payments so even if indian government was able to borrow large amount of money as a soft loan foreign aid from outside it was not simply enough for it to meet the deficit in the bop in order to conserve the country's scarce limited foreign exchange and so that the central government be able to use it for the best and the most efficient manner a scheme of priorities was declared 
1947, the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act came into effect. Then the operation of exchange control came into effect in 1995 with the introduction of Foreign Exchange and Manufacturing Act. Foreign Exchange and Management Act, FEMA, has replaced Foreign Exchange Regulation Act from 1995 onwards. Formally, exchange control means interference on the part of the central government of a country regarding every transaction in the course of exports and imports so that the government should be able to control the inflow and outflow of foreign exchange from or uh, to the country. The con this control, this kind of control, actually extends over a wider area covering import and export of goods and services, remittances from the country and remittances to the country, intra and outflow of capital, rate of exchange, methods of payment, maintenance of balance in foreign centers, acquisition and holding of foreign security, and financial relationship between residents and non-residents. So there are a lot of items which can be controlled and covered under exchange control design. Main emphasis being the control of inflow and outflow of capital and rate of exchange. A stable exchange rate helps the economy to gather its steam against a very powerful currency like dollar and a also nearing very powerful control currency like euro. Indian economy has come to such a point that it, its economy, its corporate powers has started gaining access to international market in a very big manner. And India is one of the largest markets in terms of consumption. Every company, every manufacturer worth of its salt would like to have a fit, foothold in Indian economy. You name it, they will be here. You name Audi, you name Rolls Royce, you name Boeing, Apple, Dell, General Motors. Everybody wants to do business in India. So when large companies with sizable number of products wants to gain a foothold in India, in an economy, they would like to invest here. When they like to invest here, they will bring the investment in the terms of foreign exchange. These foreign exchange are very important to our economy. We like them to create the infrastructure we lack. Exchange control involves a rationing of foreign exchange among various competing demand for it. It is effected through control of receipts and payments. The control of receipts is intended to centralize countries' means of external payments in a common pool in the hands of the monetary authorities to facilitate the use of foreign exchange. And the control of payment is intended to restrain the demand of foreign exchanges within the country so that foreign exchange can be conversed, it can be saved, keeping the national interest within the limit of available resources. Because even if the country has purchasing power, but foreign exchange should not be used for unnecessary means of consumption. In that case, you are going to lose lots of foreign exchange. So, economy growing at eight and a half percent will create a large amount of purchasing power in the hands of the individuals living in the country. Citizens having more money, they will have more demand. The demand for conspicuous consumption and luxury items will increase considerably. As a result, you have to pay large amount of money for import of capital goods 
but not for manufacturing sector import of capital goes a luxurious consumption that is that is going to be drained on the foreign exchange reserves of this country the main object of exchange control is to maintain the value of country's currency in terms of other currencies and to bring about and to keep in equilibrium in the country's balance of payment if possible so the main objective is to maintain a specific desired exchange rate exchange control also measures the strength of government influence over a number of areas for instance control over foreign exchange transactions and resources would facilitate the augmentation of resources of certain strategic needs like defense you need to purchase aeroplanes submarines aircraft missiles you need lots of foreign exchange because they have to be purchased from defense industries working outside in case of indian air force if it needs fighter jets it needs to purchase them from france united states or united kingdom for example india has purchased very advanced sukhoi 30s from russia each of these aircraft are worth 350 crores in 2003 the mirage aircraft purchased by india to can fly at the highest peak mount everest without being hunted are worth 300 crores each in current market price they will be worth 600 crores each now india has given a order to one of the french fighter jet manufacturers known as rafael for purchase of 60 aircraft which is worth 20 billion pounds that's a lot of money for a large country like india even if the economy is growing this is large amount of money because this money instead of being spent in defense can actually be spent for the development of education for the development of health for the development of road infrastructure etc but we need to be safe and secure so we need money to strengthen the hand of the government the objective is also to conserve foreign exchange which can be utilized in situation which requires urgent action on the part of the government and for valuable use to planning mode we require to build new bridges new airports new schools new hospitals we need money the need for indians and for india also overall if you just overlook individual consumption pattern the need for india to purchase bmws and audi is not that important we can use that money to create more factories more productive assets more roads more schools these will create human capital as well as capital assets exchange control is also used for capital flight restrictions capital flight means when there is substandard situation happening in the economy and the investors instead of reinvesting their money the dollars and pounds in india want to take it back exchange control comes into play exchange control can be employed to prevent the flight of capital from one country and to regulate normal day to day capital movement if adequately implemented and enforced exchange control can highly control the erratic outflow of capital it can control because you can put a stop to the withdrawal of money by foreign institutional like investor by creating conducive environment for reinvestment one of the main objective is improve balance of payment situation the balance of payment situation can be improved by improving balance of exports balance of trade balance of invisible items are already in surplus so balance balance of payment of 
a developing country like India needs urgent action from the point of view that if it is able to improve the BOP situation, it can reinvest lots of money for general infrastructure projects. To maintain a stable exchange rate equilibrium, I have already discussed this thing. To curb conspicuous consumption, we need to conserve foreign exchange. The need for a Rolls Royce or the need for a Audi, the need for a large number of houses valued in million dollars are not that important like the building of a factory, building of new equipment, building of schools, colleges and hospitals. We require them more. The exchange control can also come handy to control speculative business to make possible the essential import. You need general medicinal import, you need money for that. Lots of medicines for cancer research, for biological research, biological disease is not made in India. We need a lot of money to import that. To regulate foreign companies, exchange control can regulate foreign countries working in India. We may put a stop when put a stop to the process when they are actually going to withdraw money from India and not reinvest. We can persuade them to reinvest and keep on reinvesting in India. The same thing can be used to regulate exports and transfer of securities. Transfer of securities means if a FIA, foreign institutional investor, is coming into India, it is going to invest, purchase, suppose, the share of TCS or Infosys or Reliance. So when he purchases shares, that is not a portfolio investment because he is investing into the stock exchange directly. But when he decides to sell, when the FIA decides to sell, it is an outflow of funds. We can stop some of the outflow funds which is not desired. To uh, exchange control will also enable the government to pay back the loans which are taken as soft loans and loans from International Monetary Fund and World Bank which, which was taken in the first place for in infrastructure development. Exchange control can also enable the government to have a role to freeze foreign investment and repatriation of funds. This is the primary motive because in normal circumstances, a government, a company which comes into India with large amount of investment, invests here and gets large amount of profit, sells the shares and goes out. It takes all the profit it makes out of India. So you can stop that company from uh, closing its business and selling the shares to another company. Sometimes exchange control can be used for stopping of repatriation of funds and they can be made to they can be asked to reinvest the money wherever possible. Besides control on the export and import of goods, there are other use for exchange control. Control of the exchange rate. We can follow the fixed exchange rate design or pegging of exchange rate design. Fixing currency areas, which means fixing the currencies in which payment of imports and exports can be made. Such fixing by restricting the convertibility of home currency in terms of other currencies helps the growth of foreign exchange resources in approved currency. So we can, as an economy, India can fix its payment or receipt of payments or payments to be made in the term of dollars only. So that helps to recharge the dollar reserves in India. Similarly, bilateral agreements, which means trade agreements between two countries, contracted specifically for the purpose of avoiding balance of payment deficit. So we can make use of an exchange control to help the bilateral agreements reach between two countries involving the same currency. The exchange control policy is determined by the Ministry of Foreign Trade, Government of India, on the basis of Foreign Exchange Regulation Act 1973, and then Foreign Exchange Management Act 1995. The primary activity of working on the exchange control lies with the foreign ex sorry, foreign ministry, Ministry of Foreign Trade, part of foreign ministry, uh, 
Minister of Finance and also with Reserve Bank of India. As the custodian of all the reserves, all the incomes and expenses of central government, the Reserve Bank has a primary objective and primary work of conserving, receiving and spending and paying according to instruction of the central government of India in relation to various kinds of exports and imports. If required, the Reserve Bank of India is also empowered to advise the government regarding the policy. Various types of transactions which are affected by the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act are the purchase of and sale of and dealing in foreign exchange and maintenance of balances, purchase and sales of foreign exchange, export and import of currencies, stakes, drafts, traveler stakes, other financial instruments like securities, jewelry, etc. Import formality and procedure for realization export. So basically, uh, this is about uh, receipt of foreign exchange in exchange of exports and payment of foreign exchange in exchange of imports. Apart from that, purchase and sale of securities also generate inflow and outflow of foreign exchanges. So these are the primary transactions which are going to be controlled and monitored. Transfer of securities between residents and non-residents and acquisition and holding of foreign securities. Payments to non-residents or to their account in India. If non-residents residing outside want to transfer money with the on while they remain in a foreign land, can be transferred to India through dollars or pounds only. If a Indian citizen wants to travel outside, he needs to spend, he needs to convert his rupees into foreign currency. Branches of foreign farms, FDI, foreign direct investment, foreign agents, joint ventures, they are also going to be regulated through exchange control. Foreign nationals and acquisition of property outside India by Indians both require payment of foreign exchange to the foreign nationals and to the Indian citizen if it requires to purchase assets outside India. So these involve payment of foreign exchange also. Every person or firm or company or any authority in India earning foreign exchange expressed in any currency other than currency of Nepal and Bhutan is required to surrender the foreign exchange to an AD and obtain payment in rupees within three months from the date of acquisition. This will help controlling forex, which means if you are a person in India, individual, company, a partnership firm, or any government authority or private authority, or even a local authority, it has owned foreign exchange, it has owned foreign currency, except Nepalese and Bhutanese currency. It must submit all the foreign exchange on to whatever means with the additional director and obtain payment in exchange of the currency deposited in Indian rupees convertible at that point of time. If it doesn't show, then he or the company will be punishable under Foreign Exchange Management Act 1990. But there are certain exceptions. Foreign exchange held by ADs, RBI authorized forex dealers, NRIs, lawful income outside India, coins for numis numismatic purpose, and forex for personal purpose up to $500 are exempted from being deposited. These currencies are not required to be deposited because they are authorized, pre authorized, to be kept with certain individuals because of permitted activities. The export of goods other than those essentially needed for use within the country or under deferred payment arrangement is free, which means the exchange payment can be made without any permit or license or pre-permission. But the exporters are required to declare the FOV, freight on board value of the goods before they are shipped and should be lodged with the shipping document for the collection of export proceeds with the AD. The AD in turn after receiving the documents must report the collection or non-collection of the document to 
to the Reserve Bank of India in due course as he deems fit. The Reserve Bank of India has listed currency means which the exports can be received. The export of goods from shipment till receipt of payment as well as currency in which such payment can be received is under control. So this is one of the exception that the currency is pre-listed so there is no requirement to take the permission to receive a particular currency. The spending of foreign exchange is almost fully controlled except for few items which is written and included in the open general license in operation for the time being goods can be imported from outside India against a license only against a license such licenses are issued by import trade control authorities the receipt into India of goods of a value equivalent to the amount of currency paid out abroad is looked after by the Reserve Bank if a, if a thing is purchased while outside India and paid in foreign currency and then being brought into India a document has to be filed with the Reserve Bank of India by the person, individual or company or a partnership firm in the due course which is within 6 months from the date of purchase or transfer to India whichever is earlier. The licensing authority for the import of services or for remittances otherwise than in the payment of imported goods or for the foreign actions required for foreign travel is Reserve Bank of India and in some cases the government of India. The control is exercised through permits granted by the Reserve Bank against an application on a prescribed form. So if a person of Indian origin and Indian citizen is requiring for an exchange for travel abroad, either an individual requirement as a tourist or on an official visit, can apply to Reserve Bank of India on an application form for the conversion of rupee into the desired currency. The issue of forex for an exchange in any form such as traveler's checks, notes and coins to the persons resident in India even under instruction from an overseas branch require primary prior permission of the Bank of India. So without uh, the certificate being shown, the issue of forex is almost pretty difficult for the company. So exchange control, we have seen that exchange control is put in place, it's very important that every country control its uh, currency, the availability of currency receipt and outflow of currency so that the currency's rate of exchange is held at a particular firm level. If the currency is allowed to fluctuate too much, downward and upward trend included, which means appreciation and depreciation both included, it will be pretty difficult for the company and the country to build forex reserves. So forex is a very important term, very important item in the agenda of the central government of each country and with the help of the central banks of that country, you are required to keep a tab on the inflow, outflow, conversion of currency at every point of time. There are a lot of transactions that is covered under the foreign exchange control design and the type of foreign exchange that is going to be utilized in the term of, in the form of international trade. We are going to study them under foreign exchanges and exchange designs. But till then, keep on reading, keep on finding extra facts and be ready with all the details. Till then, thank you. Thank you very much.